Hello folks, welcome back. Today I am putting right the mistakes I made last time when I was working on my Tamiya TT01E. I was fitting a nice alloy, year racing alloy prop shaft, a nice year racing alloy uh, steering system and a nice Tamiya metal motor mount. And then what I did is I put a nice screw through the nice top deck into the nice spur gear. So yes, I am um, Slightly badgered the spur gear, just a little bit, but enough to ruin it, basically. Just ding, 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 ding with every rotation, so I had to get a new gear set with the spur in it. Uh, easily done, but annoying. I've, I've worked on this car for years, I've never done that. I always set the screws out, so I've got these two here, these two here, these two here, ready to get put back in. But I obviously knocked the two of them, and they went, swap positions, and I went, okay, this one's in front, so that's... But anyway, um, I've got a... I'm really impressed. I can't remember the name of the eBay seller, but I uh, ordered it in the evening. It arrived the next day, and that was with free delivery, so I'm really impressed with that. That was really good. Um, this is the standard gear set. Most of the gears are completely irrelevant to me now because I have the three racing uprated differentials, but the important one is the spur. Come on, get out of there. Get out of there. There we go. There you are. The same teeth 61 tooth, so yes, they are good. So, this is new and old. There's the old one looks fine at a distance, but there's a let's see if I can find it. There's definitely there's a chunk, you probably won't see that, but there's a chunk on the uh, maybe you will on the uh, the teeth there. There's a couple of teeth that are completely squashed out of shape, so it's better to replace it. Simple as that. There we are. Except I have to uh, I actually have to take that out and which way is it I have to do this again? There was a way. Uh, was it that way? Maybe it was this way, I can't remember. There's there's a way you've got to try and get us to sit. Um there and there. Right, that's the one. Lovely. I need to rebuild, obviously, rebuild the back differential and everything. I take all that apart just to check. Forward is this way, that one down. So it must be that way. No. That way. That's the way. Always check that first, guys. <laughs> no point in rebuilding the car and then going. I mean, this this one's not so bad actually because it looks like we've got a wee stop there. See, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There's a wee, a wee sticky out bit of plastic there to act as a stop so you can't put the diff in the wrong way. But not all cars have got that. And quite often you see people going, Why is my front differential or my front axle's turning the wrong way or my back one's turning the wrong way? It's because that's happened. Right, no oh, dread. This is the bit I don't like doing because I've got to try and get grease all over this without getting it all over everything else. And then I've got to, um, this this is all just a pain. But anyway, first of all, let's grease up the differential again because I had to clean it all out. Right, the reason I'm complaining about this bit is it's just really awkward. Really awkward, and it's just get the drive shaft in. There we go. No, no, there we go. almost. Nope, drive shaft out again. Uh, and and plug. Yes, yes, good, good. All right, where's that bit? There's that bit. This is that bit. Oh, it's all falling apart. Of course it has. There we go. Is that everything still in? Yes, they are. All right. 
and then the rear essentially the rear bumper but it also has houses the bottom of the differential holds it all in place the, the diff uh, housing houses the diff housing is what it does it's, it's very housey uh, where's that there's that one little flat heads here flat heads here again these are not Phillips these are GIS Japanese industrial standard get in there once this is in hopefully it'll be the worst part, the most fiddly part will be over and it won't fall apart in my hands when I'm trying to do stuff. Well that one feels awfully stripped out. Which is odd because I've never had to take this off before. I've had this chassis for many years though to be fair but... That's odd. I don't like that. Mm. Feels, feels stripped out but I, like I say I've never taken that off so I don't know how it would be stripped out. Anyway. Um, we attach the shock absorber. I probably need to. Uh, I think we're going to service at least one, maybe two of these shocks anyway, because it looks like there's, looks like they're sleek, they're sleaking. It looks like they're leaking slightly. Not not sleaking lightly, but leaking slightly. Right. I will need to resolder this motor, but that's okay. I can do that after I reassembled everything. Clock towers next. Center screws still in there. Didn't need to remove that. It attaches to the this side of the diff housing. So the outside two screws it to that side of this housing, if that makes sense. So just need to do this. Oh, these screwdrivers are so much better. So much better. Should have got these sort of screwdrivers years ago. Okay, yeah, that one's that shock's a bit airy. Needs is that the one that's leaking? That's that's the one that's leaking. Oh, yeah, that's right. I haven't actually uh, screwed that in yet. Anyway, I'll sort that out. These three, it's so easy to over tighten because they don't they don't go all the way in. They uh, there's stops that you sort of squash. It's almost like rather than screwing the two pieces together it's almost like you're using the the screws to just squash them together because you've got you've got plastic shoulders and the screw head touch the plastic shoulders and you can see the shaft of the screw is still exposed because it isn't all the way in but it squashes down on these shoulders um, and they uh, you don't want to over tighten them but at the same time you want to make sure it's absolutely grasping hold hold of the bottom of the uh, diff housing because you don't want any movement in it and you also want it to seal as well as possible well I'd be surprised if if this because I've had this for several years it's had a bit of a battering it's got the original chassis and the original diff housing I mean I'd be surprised if they were still capable of sealing to be honest they probably warped and moved around and had a little battering and they, they probably don't seal particularly well anymore. Right, do that plug noise, go on. There you go, plug. This way around. It's getting there, it's getting there, it's getting there. Well, I haven't yet got to the point where I ruined it last time. I'm not going to this time. I've decided. I've decided I'm not going to ruin it this time. I didn't decide that last time, so that makes all the difference. Now that I've decided it. I've decided nothing will go wrong, so nothing will go wrong. So that's fine. That's good. Some of them are feeling a little bit second hand now as well. Some of the mount some of these screws are going in nice and snugly, like really, really nicely. And the other ones are just going, I uh, don't really have much to grab onto anymore. The other ones are fine. Yeah. Okay. Come on, there, there we go. So, see these longer screws? The lighter colored ones, the silver ones, they're the longer ones. They go in the rearmost holes, not the 
ones in front so they don't go through into the spur gear and ruin the spur gear. Right, longer screw. Rear holes. There we go. There we go, no problems. That one's completely goosed. <laughs> completely goosed. I have been putting, I remember that one, that one I've been using as a super glue because if you try to make a new thread with the super glue, put some super glue down uh, with the screw, the super glue firms around the screw and essentially makes a new thread. But um, yeah. That Gorilla super glue is terrible, by the way. It's terrible. Because it's supposed to be America's number one selling super glue. It's rubbish. It's so poor. It takes ages to set. And once it does set, it's not particularly strong. Normal super glue, you go dollop, and within seconds, you're like, geez, that's strong. So I don't know what, maybe it's like some sort of special slow setting formula that does something, but it's rubbish. Gorilla. Gorilla. So I don't think it's the Gorilla Glue, the, the, the one that's like super famous, but it's the same company, Gorilla, and they make a super glue and it's rubbish. So um, I'm going to have to get different super glue, like a Loctite super glue or something. They're, they're, they're a good brand. Anyway, that one's now nice and snug. Yeah, the two back silver ones are best. They're just a bit, a bit past it now. There we are. These screws here are from the previous uh, steering system. Completed. Nice. What I need to do now is just solder this uh, this positive motor wire back on to the motor. Um, don't have the best of access to be honest but we'll make do because I don't want to have to take this apart again um, that'll be fine that'll be all right and then um, we'll give it a test out to see if this the whole point was to see if this uh, red dry shaft can now because I don't because this is warped slightly I, I can't see it by eye as I said last time but it was rattling around a little bit uh, to see if this has enough rigidity so it stays completely true when it's spinning at high RPM hopefully it does um, if not I prefer the look of the red anyway because it matches the shock absorbers. However, when I, was, I noticed when I was editing that red, white and this sort of blue is actually the Tamiya logo colours. So it would have been quite cool to have the white wheels, the red parts and the blue shaft just for Tamiya. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. I do like the look of the red anyway. It's a quite a handsome looking chassis actually. This one's obviously quite scabby because it's had many years of abuse. But I like the simplicity of the TT01 and TT02. I like the tub chassis design. Um, it's just a very honest design. It's quite. A, it's actually quite a slim chassis considering it's a. Sort of, it's not a race chassis, is it? It's a. It's a car park bashing, car park Grand Prix type chassis. And but it is actually quite attractive looking. I think. I think it's quite a nice looking chassis. Anyway, let's get this soldered. There we are then. Soldered on. Everything's good. Uh, time to try it. Right, steering test. Can't tell if that's any freer or not than it was before. I mean, theoretically, it should be now it's got ball ends everywhere rather than just rubbish fitments, rubbish fittings. Um, it's easier to move by hand, it's smoother, and there should be no binding, so theoretically, that's better as well. But the most important thing is does it sound smoother? because of a straighter drive shaft. Yes, to my ears it definitely, definitely does. I can actually, I'm looking at it now, and there's no, there's no visible brrrr vibrations from it. And there's a very small amount. If I compare the audio from this to previous time, much better. Much happier with that. Perfect. Perfect. And there we are. That is one working TT01E.
And I really like this car. I really like this car. I like it how it's been transfer transformed over the years from a very basic, not particularly uh, high performing car with, you know, it doesn't didn't have bearings. It had uh, plastic bushings and it had, you know, it came standard with um, friction shocks. Although I had it oil filled from from the get go, and you know, I had non adjustable links. Now it has the adjustable links everywhere. Adjustable toe, adjustable camber adjustable rear camber it doesn't have adjustable rear toe or anything like that it's not that advanced um but it, it's full bearing kit it has better differentials it has cv drive shafts um oil filled shocks it, it's now just a very competent car park racer it's yeah i like it i like it a lot and i like how my tto e or my tto1 looks different from your tto1 because everybody, there's so many parts available for the TTO one to customize it, or any Tamiya really, but just for the, for example, the TTO one, um, throw a little bit of money at it, and everybody ends up with something, something that's completely different from everybody else's because people got different tastes, and there's so many bits available. You can go red, you can go blue, you can do anything you want. Um, you can get red adjustable parts at the top. You can go, you can go, actually go for um, proper normal looking camber links as opposed to these big hefty arms with just an adjustment. A little bit of adjustment in there, see, um, but you can actually get normal, sort of normal looking ish uh, top arms and everything. Um, so, give someone a little bit of money and a TTO1, and it'll look completely different than someone else's TTO1. So, that's what I like about it. It's great, it's great, it's really good. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. We'll see this running again soon, hopefully. And uh, I'll see you there. Bye bye.